Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to have a look at turning these two tiny little LiPo batteries into one 2S LiPo battery. So uh, before we get into this, I just want to have a quick talk about uh, what these are and why I'm doing this. So basically this guy here, this is a 180 milliamp hour 2S LiPo battery that I have been using to run in some of my Antweight combat robots. Now, this is actually a little bit too big, especially if you're running a weaponless uh, robot. So, they're too big in two reasons. One, it's uh, too big capacity-wise, which means that, two, it's actually too big size and weight-wise. So, I have an upcoming bot that I want to save a little bit of weight and a little bit of size on the battery on, so I can shred some of this uh, capacity in the battery and hopefully save on that size and on that weight. So these two tiny little batteries here are 100 milliamp hour batteries. Uh, so together they are going to make a 2S 100 milliamp hour battery, which means they're going to drop down on a little bit of the size, and it's going to be about half the size and slightly different shape, uh, which will be actually quite nice. It will fit, hopefully fit, into the robot that I'm building a lot better than this thing will. So this one here, it's actually a dead one, and what we're going to do is to get these guys into a 2S battery. We're going to perform some surgery on this, and then perform some surgery on those two guys as well. So, just quickly, before we go into this, I just want to have a quick talk about why this works, and why uh, you can just easily and quickly do this. So, these are what's known as 1S LiPo batteries, and when we say 1S, we mean one cell. So. These are a single battery cell each, a single lithium polymer battery cell. And on the, on the side here you can see some voltages written down. So 3.7 is the nominal voltage for any type of LiPo cell, any type of singular LiPo cell. And that means it's half charged. This is kind of where you leave a LiPo battery for storage and other bits and pieces. 4.2 is the full charge of a single LiPo cell and 3 volts is the discharge value. If a LiPo battery ever gets below 3 volts or a LiPo single cell ever gets below 3 volts, that cell is dead. It is gone. There's basically nothing you can do to recover it or at least nothing safe you can do to recover it. Uh, there are some methods but uh, they are high risk because LiPo batteries are uh, very kind of unstable in nature. So. Uh, anything you do to try and recover a LiPo battery has the possibility of catching that LiPo battery on fire. But this guy here, this guy is 2S, which means it is a 2-cell LiPo battery. So as you can see written on the case there, it is a 7.4 battery, 7.4 uh, volt battery. Basically it means it is a double the nominal. But that means when it's charged, it's actually double this 4.2, which means it's 8.4 when it's fully charged. Although this one is actually dead, which is why we're doing some surgery on it. It got discharged below the 3 volt range, and there is nothing I can do to bring this back, so we're going to hack the leads off of it and go from there. However, even though it is a dead battery, it still does have some voltage in it. So as I hack these leads off, we are going to make sure that we're covering these in duct tape and electrical tape to make sure that the contact can't short. Uh, because like I said, even though it is dead, there is still some voltage in it, and LiPo batteries can dump their current very, very quickly if they encounter a short. So uh, anytime you're messing around with LiPo batteries, cut one wire at a time, make sure that everything is uh, insulated before you cut the other wire, and make sure that every time you store them or put them down, that all of the wires are either in connectors like this or are insulated in some way, such as with uh, heat shrink or whatever else. So basically the way we're going to do this, as you can see here, we've got these two tiny little uh, one cell batteries and we're essentially going to create a little circuit like this. So we have the two little one cell batteries that look like this and they both have a positive and they both have a negative on them just like that. So we're going to wire the negative of one battery into the positive of the other battery and then also off this connection we're going to run a plug out uh, so you can see here we've got a little balance lead which helps the charger balance this thing up and make sure that both of the cells are sitting at the right voltage, which is 4.2 volts. So we're going to have two plugs coming off of this thing and one of them is going to be this balance lead. So this is our balance lead up here. 
um, and that is going to have a connection point to this middle section of this battery just like this. Then we're going to have uh, the minus line here. The minus line is going to go from one battery up to the balance lead and the positive line is also going to go from one ba uh, battery up to the balance lead. The positive of one battery up to the balance lead and then these two things are also going to run out to the actual plug that's going over here. So this is our little connector, battery connector, and then that's our balance lead up there. So that's how we're going to wire this whole thing up, uh, just by substituting these two batteries into here, and we're cutting these leads off and adding them in to the top circuit up there. All right, so let's get cutting and soldering. So here it is, it is now completed and it has been charged and it is now ready to go. So it charging is a good thing because that means that all of the soldering joints are done correctly and everything has matched up because the charger I have will not charge something if the batteries are not connected correctly. So it's all good, it is now charged and ready to go. If you want to do this type of thing yourself, follow the diagram that I drew on the table um, at the start of this video and just... As you go through, make sure you're only uh, stripping one side of the LiPo battery at any given time. So if you look at a conventional LiPo battery, make sure you only strip either the positive or the negative at a given time and completely solder and um, heat shrink one connection before starting on the next connection because if these things do short, LiPo batteries will jump a lot of power very quickly and you will get sparking and arcing between any two exposed leads on a LiPo battery, even on single cells and even on tiny little single cells like this guy. So now for the big test, we've got this guy here, which is a 180 milliamp hour battery. This is what I currently use in all of my uh, ant weight combat robots and it weighs 12 grams. Okay, that's cool. Now we want to see how our um, homemade 100 milli, um, yeah, milliamp hour battery goes. So hopefully this is actually lighter because that means I'll actually be able to use it in some smaller combat robots in the future. And that's 8 grams. Awesome. So that is a 4 gram saving and that doesn't sound like a lot but 4 grams is actually quite a lot in some of the weight classes I'm going to go down to. Eventually I want to build fully weight robots which are 75 grams and then nano weight robots which are 25 grams. This pack won't go into a nano weight robot uh, 8 grams or 9 grams is too heavy for a nano weight robot, but maybe maybe one of those cells will go into that uh, pack, but uh, or that robot I should say. But there we go. So that has been a very quick video on how to turn single cell LiPo batteries into a 2S LiPo battery. And I've also, as you can see, wrapped this thing in tape just to keep it a little bit more protected and a little bit more secure and ready to go. But there you go. That has been it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.